Hello everyone, Jordan here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a new review. Today we're looking at the Acer Concept D CP5 monitor, or more specifically the CP5271 UV. Marketed at Creatives, the CP5 looks to be a great solution for those doing color accurate work such as photo or video editing, but it's also got a few extra features that can make this the perfect monitor for those creatives that also like to dabble in a bit of gaming in their spare time. I've not actually seen much coverage of this, so I'm hoping this is all helpful to you that are potentially considering this as your next monitor. So as usual, we'll cover some of the key features and then we'll crack open the box. Now on the topic of the box, this one is a press sample that's rotated, so yours won't look like this, but I did want to quickly mention the minimal packaging that Acer use. They're very conscious with the impact of packaging and have now made it almost 100% virgin plastic free and 100% recyclable. Good guy Acer. So the CP5 is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440p monitor using an 8-bit FRC IPS panel with HDR600 support. It also has a quantum dot backlighting enabling 99% of Adobe's RGB gamut. And for those of you that are looking for a 4K panel, Acer also offers that which is the CP727 UV. In addition to that, the CP5 also supports up to 170Hz refresh rates with 1 millisecond response time. It's also got a plethora of ports, but more on that later. But for now, let's get the box open. Inside, we'll find the power adapter, HDMI display port, and USB hub cable. Then of course, the monitor. So before we look at the actual monitor and its features, I wanna show you how to add on the calibration or glare hood. It's fairly easy to do and will require a Phillips screwdriver. Firstly, the two sides are screwed on and the monitor has small circular notches in the side to match the small pegs in the hood. Once you screw in both sides, the top just sits on and it's got magnets to keep it secure especially helpful if you use this portrait. Now I would usually comment on the fact you need a screwdriver to put it on, but realistically you're only ever gonna do this once or twice, so it's not too bad. So the CP5 is ready to rock, let's have a look at some of the features. Upon initial look, the sleek monitor with the wooden textured base is certainly not for everyone. Personally, I'd like to see a simple black base, even if it was rounded like this one, but being that this display is from Ace's creative range, it's designed to fit around that product category. So for example, it matches perfectly with the Concept D desktop. So let's touch on adjustment while we're in this area. This has got the usual tilt height adjustment that you'd expect with swivel at the base. And as I mentioned in the intro, it can be rotated portrait if you wish. Just take note that there's no extra parts to make the hood a portrait as well. So you will have one side that could be more perceptible to glare than others. The height adjustable pole is pretty solid with a little part of the cable management at the base. The plastic top does feel a little bit cheap, but it does serve its purpose. The rear of the monitor is a sleek design with a simple debossed logo, which is nice and minimal. Below that we have the OSD controls and the top is power with others set to dedicated features which I'll run off later. On the right hand side as we look at the back or the left side front on, there are two USB 3.1 ports. This I really like being someone who uses an older PC where USB 3 was only just being implemented with a standard feature. Let's look at the main ins and outs underneath. We've got a 3.5mm headphone jack, a further two USB 3.1A ports, the USB 3 Type B port for connection to your PC, a USB-C port which delivers 65 watts of power, so great if you're charging a docked laptop. Further down we've got a display port and then two HDMI ports. And then finally the barrel port for power. There's a really great range of I.O. on this monitor. So it's about time we look at the main selling point, the display. Crikey. I hope you'll be able to tell on film but this is a matte anti-glare screen and I've set it to Adobe RGB for the B-roll shots as it's one of the mostly common used modes but I will go over the different options in a moment. There's a fairly thin bezel on this monitor but if you're using the glare hood then that reduces the look of it even more. There's a simple Acer logo on the bottom of the monitor and that's more of a matte finish so it won't catch as much light. So going into the OSD and the joystick is the main controller for this. It does take a little bit of time to get used to how the menu works, but after a little bit of time of playing about with it, you'll soon get the hang of it. Here we have all the standard monitor settings you'd expect, such as brightness, contrast, gamma, blue light options, audio settings, etc, etc. But getting to the menu that most of you are here to see, the color options. There's a great range out of the box with this monitor, including sRGB, P3 D65, P3 DCI, HDR, which is a great choice for gaming, Rec 709, EBU, SMPTEC, and then a the general setting. Acer also has a calibrated sRGB mode called Calibration 2 in the menu. This is a preset by Acer that can be reprogrammed by using Acer's color calibration software. It works with a few different color meters and it makes it easy to change between any of the three gamuts. Before I mention the additional buttons that we have set to dedicated features, the top is for power, second is quick change with the display mode, Third is brightness, making it easy to change later in the day or at night. And then the fourth button changes the input mode. 
Now I use a BenQ 4K panel as my daily driver that was color corrected with a friend's color checker Spider 2. Now that isn't validated in any way, so it's not a true reflection of an accurate monitor, unlike this one. Using this monitor over the last couple of weeks was a true pleasure. Usually when I color correct my videos with my BenQ, I'm always slightly doubtful if it's actually correct. So I just do what I can and just hope it translates okay across the viewer's device, being that everyone uses different displays. So using the CP5 felt great as I knew what I was editing in front of me was accurate. So then sending that out was giving the viewer the closest possible color to what I wanted them to see. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get a color checker in time with my loan period to actually check the accuracy of the contrast and brightness myself. But thankfully, a few other websites have looked at this monitor already. One was IT Pro that claimed this monitor deviates by 11.3% over 25 grids. It also tested against an ESO which was 4.7%, but that monitor was twice the price of this one, so you do have to cut the CP5 some slack. Basically, if you want to make sure anything you're working on is accurate, just focus that work to the centre of the screen. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this monitor also has HDR, which is great for those of you that like to dabble in a bit of gaming too, alongside your work. That plus the 170Hz smooth motion is really appealing to gamers, so it's another trick up the CP5 sleeve. As color accurate monitors, they're not cheap, but the CP5's asking price of 799, considering it's 170 hertz, that's actually a pretty good price. Generally speaking, you can expect to play over a thousand pounds or dollars easily for an accurate monitor. The closest I could find within the CP5's price realm is the Asus ProArt PA27AC, but that's only 60 hertz and lacks the baked in color configurations. And the next was a bigger jumper, 1056, which was the ESO Color Edge XG2420, but that's only 1080p. As someone that deals with color work every day in one way or another, be it color correction in videos, editing pictures in Lightroom, or using Photoshop, this has been an absolute pleasure to use. I love the vast connectivity options. The glare hood is great for the ever-changing UK weather. 170 Hz is a great bonus being a gamer, and of course, top quality color and HDR. This monitor is really one of my most favorites I've used to date, and I really didn't want to give it back. So I hope this review was helpful to you and I'll leave an Amazon link in the description if you want to pick up the CP5 for yourself. If you have any more questions then do leave them in the box below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss a future video. Thank you all for watching, thank you to Acer for sending this out for me to review and I'll see you all in the next one.